Let's talk about how this happened. Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name's Alana. I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer based in Brooklyn, New York. And today's video, we are going to be talking about my journey to create this beast of a mural that I painted in my own bedroom. How I wanted to get started painting murals and the steps that I took to achieve that, as well as some of the pitfalls that I had along the way. So if you're interested in any of that, Stay tuned. How did I even come up with this mural design? Why did I even start creating it? Well, I knew that as a freelancer, it's really important to diversify your business as much as possible. So I have some income streams that I use already. I have art licensing, I do commercial work for social campaigns and book covers, and I have all these different things that I'm interested in. But after a year of running my freelance business, I had done so much work digitally, and I was like, I'm really, wanting to get into more traditional mediums again, working with my hands and painting something or drawing something, using just traditional materials, not using my iPad. I've seen so many of my Instagram peers and just my other freelance peers who are really into murals and they are very successful muralists and have made that a really robust part of their business model. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, this would be a perfect way to introduce traditional medium and sort of check that box for myself, as well as diversifying my business even more with another income stream. So at first my interest started with the base level of what can I do to get my stuff out there, which was for me, public calls for art. You might see sometimes, you know, maybe you're walking around in your neighborhood, you might see a flyer, or you might hear about, you know, a public art call for, you know, local businesses or maybe a new park in your area. They're looking for muralists or they're looking for, you know, something to go up as a vinyl or a banner or something. And I answered one of those calls. I had submitted this design the phrase says a better a better tomorrow starts today i thought it really fit the, the theme of the of the park that they were putting up so i put this together i was really proud of it really excited and they didn't get back to me <laughs> but what ended up happening was i did end up having an opportunity to get a mural course scholarship Lauren Hom has a course called Mural Painting for Designers, and I'm just like, wow, that's perfect. It's a course that's open, you know, a few times a year. I already had a mural design ready to go, and all you had to do to apply for the scholarship was mock up a mural design in Photoshop on a wall of what a mural could look like from you and post on your, your Instagram page. And that was my post. <laughs> and I won. I won a scholarship and I was so, so, so excited and super happy and grateful that she chose me along with a few other designers as well. So from there, I was able to just really hit the ground running. It's a really comprehensive course, completely pre-recorded so you can take it at your own pace. And it goes over every single thing from supplies to paint finishes to the sizes of paint that you'll need for certain square footages, how to transfer your mural design. So yeah, let's do this for real. If I wanna book mural clients, I probably should start by doing a mural. <laughs> and what better way to start than in my own room? I already had a few paint brushes, but I didn't have a paint roller, so I needed to get that. I needed to buy tarp so I could cover my bed because this is literally my bed where I sleep, so I'm just like, I don't want to get paint all over my stuff. For this, I ended up using one quart of the base color and sample sizes of all the other colors. I didn't end up having like a lot of paint left over, so I feel pretty good about, about that uh, investment at least. I could use the paint for, for other projects in the future, which is great. So all in, I think I invest about 200 to $250 to get all of the supplies that I needed to create this mural. And the cool thing is, is that I knew that I wouldn't use all of the paint. I knew that I wouldn't just waste the paint. 
So I started with taping off all of the edges, as you can see, putting up, you know, my blue tape, which I already had from a previous project. I did that and I started to paint my trim so I could put down my base color. When I was finally ready to transfer the design, I ended up getting large scale prints made at Staples. I was able to measure it out in four large panels, as you can see. So I decided to not use a projector for this mural, and I'll tell you why. I decided that I didn't want to, one, invest a lot of money <laughs> right out the gate, right? So I was just like, you know, I understand that projectors can be pretty expensive, especially really nice ones. So I'd rather save up a little bit more. Uh, another reason why I chose the transfer paper is because I didn't want to rely on always having access to a projector because I understand that sometimes, you know, maybe you're at a site where there isn't, you know, active electricity or there isn't a plug that you can use in a, you know, the correct angle or space or something to um, transfer your mural design. So I wanted to not be constrained by that necessarily and I wanted to be able to say well I have experience doing something else that doesn't require using a projector so I think I just sort of wanted to give myself kind of a little bit of a challenge and more of a flexibility if I needed to um, for future future projects definitely. The transfer paper worked out great but it did take a long time. I was constantly lifting the paper up and down every time to see, and like, this is pretty big. I ended up doing that and I think it took me four hours to transfer the whole design. And sometimes the paper would fall off of my wall, so I'd have to retape it up and then it'd get misaligned a little bit. So it was just, it, it took a long time. I started with all of the surrounding imagery, so I started with the florals and, you know, the little spots around you see in white and like the little bumblebee and stuff like that. And just trying to be as methodical with using my colors as possible and just, just going, <laughs> going along and along and along. I spread out painting this mural like across maybe a couple of months. I really wanted to take my time and honestly, there was a lot going on. I had other projects to tend to, you know, I'm not always, you know, in a position to just drop everything and start painting. I took my time and that's also another benefit of being your own client. You can set your own pace and not feel that pressure of finishing everything and like, you know, a few days or something like that. So, what are the mistakes that I made? <laughs> so, when I first taped everything off to do my trim, I think I misinterpreted something from the course, some, some instruction about like, oh, once you do your trim, you can remove your tape and then use your roller. But I didn't paint my trim well enough, like I didn't do enough coats. So it was really patchy looking. So I already took off all my tape. And then by the time I realized it, I was just like, I can't roll all the way up to the edges. So I ended up having to go back with a brush and like very carefully like doing a line across so I could finish up the trim. So I like messed that up for like no reason, like right out the gate. I was just like, how did I mess that up? Like, that's so silly. <laughs> Another thing that I didn't do that I should have done was I didn't sand down well enough. I thought that caulking over some of the holes in my wall, moving that out would be enough, but it was not. And if you can remove any kind of irregularities in the surface and stuff like that, do it. I literally found like sandpaper in like a dollar store or something not too far from my house. And I think I didn't realize how easy it would be to obtain sandpaper. And by the time I had realized that I had already painted over everything, but I was just like, you can get really weird looking effects on the paint, like the way it reacts to like that weird, not smoothed over part versus the other smoother parts of the wall. So I'm just like, that was like something that was so avoidable. But another thing that I didn't realize when I was uh, getting into this and what I 
only realized once I had started sharing my progress on social media and Instagram and on TikTok <laughs> was a lot of my muralist friends were saying like, oh, I love those colors. Like the bright ones are gonna take a few coats. You know, don't feel like bad about like, oh, it's not covering or whatever, but just know like those brighter colors, like the yellow and stuff like that, like the red take a few coats to get down. So now what I realize is a technique is that a lot of people use is that they'll put down a base color of like white or something and then paint the yellow over on top of it so that you don't need as much, you know, as many co coats to cover um, and get a nice bright, you know, finish on it. So I definitely know that for the future and I really appreciate them <laughs> letting me know that. Another, not a mistake, but a note that I would have for myself is, is that I definitely felt a lot of pressure, I think, to chronicle and film every single second of me painting. So I think that kind of hindered my progress and how long it took me to actually finish the mural because I was like, I need to be able to catalog all this entire process from start to finish um, for social media and for videos like this and stuff like that. So I was literally filming hours and hours and hours of footage on my phone, on my iPad and stuff like that. One, taking up all my storage space, not good. And and two, if I didn't feel like I was good enough or felt comfortable enough to be on camera at that moment, I was just like, I can't paint today. So that kind of, you know, set me back a little bit unnecessarily. So I think in the future, you know, I'll do like, you know, people do like the highlights a little bit. They'll do like, you know, I'm painting this one area or I'm doing this little area, but they won't obviously have the camera on themselves like the whole entire time. Like that's like so unreasonable. So I think I, will remove that from my workflow in the future and be more strategic about the kinds of shots and things that I want to share and get um, because I have so much footage now. <laughs> so what's next? This bad boy is going in my portfolio <laughs> and I'm going to start using it to pitch to companies and places all over the, the area that could use some mural love. Uh, so I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes for me and how that, how that journey will take place in my business. So you guys will want to stay tuned on here and on my social media channels to find out how that goes. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Leave it a like, share it with a friend comment any questions or share any of your experiences with murals with me. I'd love to know more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.